Hi, it's Miss Mamie. I'm going to read a story to you today. It is called Tales from Fern Hollow, The Brass Band Robbery. And before we get started, I wanna point something out. Do you see this big instrument right here that this person or animal is playing? That's called a sousaphone. And it was invented around the time that John Philip Sousa was writing music. And it was actually named after him. And the reason that we have it is because it's actually a type of tuba. You've probably seen me play a tuba before. I usually have to sit down. It's hard to hold. Um, I play, put it on my lap as I play it. But if you remember correctly, John Philip Sousa writes music that people march to. And quite often the people who are playing the music, the band is marching while they play it. Think of like when you go to a parade and perhaps there's a band that's walking down and while they're playing the music, they're walking too, right? So this is so much easier to play and walk at the same time than a normal tuba, which is why J.W. Pepper made the sousaphone and named it after John Philip Sousa because he helped inspire this instrument and we still have it today. So here we go, the Brass Band Robbery. This is written and illustrated by John Patience. That's a good last name. And it goes like this. One morning, a large wooden crate arrived on the freight train at Fern Hollow Station. It was addressed to Lord Trundle and marked Fragile. I wonder what that could be, old Stripey the porter. I don't know, replied Mr. Twinkle, the station master. But I better telephone Lord Trundle to let him know it's arrived. <coughs> Excuse me. When he heard the news, Lord Trundle was very excited and rushed down to the railway station in his car. Ah, at last, he cried, looking at the great big wooden crate. I've been waiting for this to arrive for weeks. The crate was much too big to go inside Lord Trundle's car, so Old Stripey and Mr. Twinkle helped him tie it to the roof rack, and then away went the car, bouncing and rattling down the road. The next day, Lord Trundle held a meeting at Trundleberry Manor. As you all know, he began, May Day isn't far away from now, and I want to do something really special in the way of celebration, so I bought these. Lord Trundle pointed to the great big wooden crate. Musical instruments, he went on. Fern Hollow is going to have a brass band. <coughs> Everyone had been given a musical instrument and the band had begun to practice when suddenly the door burst open and in walked Snitch and Snatch. No one had invited them because they were always causing trouble. Two sneaky weasels had been peeping through the keyhole and had decided that they wanted to join the band. Give me the big drum, said Snatch. I'll have the sousaphone, said Snitch. I'm afraid there are only two triangles left, said Lord Trundle politely. We don't want your silly triangles, screamed Snitch. And what's more, if we can't have the drum and sousaphone, then you won't have them for long either. And they went, slamming the door behind them. That night, Snitch and Snatch broke into Trundleberry Manor, intending to steal the drum and the sousaphone, but... As Snitch was carrying the drum down the steps in front of the manor, it slipped out of his hands. Boom, boom, boom. It went as it bounced down the steps. The noise woke Lord Trundle, who jumped out of bed and looked out of his window, just in time to see the two weasels running away with the musical instruments. Quickly, Lord Trundle telephoned Fern Hollow Police Station. P.C. Hoppet arrived a few minutes later, looking slightly out of breath from pedaling his bicycle so fast. Don't worry, Lord Trundle, he panted. We'll soon track the villains down. Which way did they go? Lord Trundle pointed out the direction Snitch and Snatch had taken and followed P.C. Hoppet as the policemen raced off in pursuit. There they are! 
cried P.C. Hoppet. Down on the riverbank, we've got them now. They'll never be able to swim all the way across the ferny with the drum and the sousaphone. But the, willy, the wily weasels had a plan. They pushed the big drum into the river and jumped on top. And then Snitch began to paddle with a stick while Snatch held on to the sousaphone. Soon, the weasels were halfway across the river, leaving Lord Trundle and P.C. Hoppet standing helplessly on the bank. It looked very much like Snitch and Snatch were going to get away, but suddenly the drum became caught in a strong current and was swept away down the river. The terrified weasels clung onto the drum for all they were worth, but it was no use because they were quickly swept over the waterfalls. Luckily for them, Mr. Whirligill, the fairy man, was watching and was able to drag them both out. As a punishment, P.C. Hoppet locked Snitch and Snatch up in Fern Hollow Police Station for a few days where they missed all the May Day fun. Lord Trundle's brass band was, of course, a great success. They paraded around the streets of Fern Hollow all afternoon before at last they stopped for a well-deserved rest at the Jolly Vole, where Mr. Mr. Crackleberry supplied everyone with orange juice and sandwiches. The end, and here is a map of Fern Hollow.